Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Oh, that's better. <laughs> Welcome to Crown Point Church in beautiful downtown Richfield, Minnesota. Kind of. <laughs> I'm Dick Hall, Associate Pastor here at Crown Point. We're happy to have you with us today as we head into a refreshing fall season <laughs> coming up pretty close. So good to see those who've been away traveling and on vacation. We missed you. First time visitors, if you're here, we want to extend a big welcome to you. We're glad to have you here today. Uh, if you would, if you get a chance, there's a yellow guest information card out on the desk in the hallway. We'd ask you to fill it out so we can connect with you, keep you up to date as to what's happening. We're glad to have you here today. Pastor. Let's begin singing, He Took My Sins Away. We'll sing all three verses before we sing the chorus. So sing with me. I came to Jesus, weary, worn, and sad. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And now His love has made my heart so glad. He took my sins away. The load of sin was more than I could bear. He took my sins away. He took them all away. And now on Him I roll my every care. He took my sins away. If you will come to Jesus Christ today, He'll take your sins away. He'll take your sins away and keep you happy in His love each day. He took my... There should be some shouting about now. Oh, he took my sins away. He took my sins away. And he keeps me singing every day. I'm so glad he took my sins away. He took my sins away. Put your hands together. He took my sins away. He took my sins away. And he keeps me singing every day. I'm so glad he took my sins away. He took my sins away. And a shout, hallelujah. And a shout, hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. That God should love a sinner such as I Should yearn to change my sorrow into bliss Nor rest till He had planned to bring me nigh How wonderful is love like this Such love, such wondrous love Such love such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. You notice that the words are that God should love a sinner such as I. I would prefer to sing it that God should love a sinner such as you. <laughs> But that's not the way it was written, and that's not the way it is. Apostle Paul said, of whom I am chief. Oh, hallelujah. He took your sins away. That for a willful outcast such as I, the Father planned, the Savior bled in time, Redemption for a worthless slave to buy. Who long and I grace the You've got to praise the Lord. Such love, such wondrous love. Such love, such wondrous 
love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is God like this. And now he takes me to his heart of son. He asks me not to fill a servant's place. The far off country wandering far all down wide open arms Sing it with me now. Oh, such love, such wondrous love, such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this. Such love, such wondrous love. Such love, such love, such wondrous love that God should love a sinner such as I. How wonderful is love like this? How wonderful! Come on. this morning. It is a wonderful thing that Jesus died for the likes of me. How wonderful. Glory 
and the lifter of my glory and the As we go to prayer this morning, there are a number of folks that need our prayer and God's attention. Many you see printed in your bulletin, others that I'm made aware of this morning. Roger Dockin, he doesn't attend here. I don't know if he's ever come here. But way back in uh, 2013, he was a part of the original church here, Bethany Covenant. And he's the one that told Dave uh, that this building was going to be for sale, Dave, Dave Rudolph. Dave Rudolph told me and we started the process. Anyway, uh, the doctors have told his wife that maybe it's time to think about uh, what's next. And he's struggling with uh, heart issues and cancer. And we need to pray that God would touch that family. Also, Rick is not well today. You have to forgive me. I've been gone three months and I'm on heavy medication. So I can't remember his last name. I will when I sit down. I know none of you can identify, but try, will you? He sits right down here, elderly gentleman, uh, veteran. He's just not well today. And we need to pray for him. They need a safe place, these folks. Stand with me, will we? You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. In the shelter of your presence, I find life safe, Lord. You are my Lift your hands and sing it again, Lord. You are my hiding place. You are my hiding place. In the shelter of your presence, I find I'm safe, Lord. You are my Heavenly Father, we need a hiding place. Sometimes even when we're well, we need a hiding place, a safe place that we can run into, a shelter. You have said you will be such a place for us. So here we come, <laughs> running just as fast as we can go. There are some today that are not well that need such a place. And we lift them before you and ask that you will touch them. Father, we're all reminded that on this day, many people have lost their lives in this country and many family members so affected, many still affected to this day. The least we can do is lift them before you. Whether they know you as Savior yet or not, we lift them before you. Many hurting children without a father. Would you be a father to the fatherless and a husband to the widow as you have promised? And draw them to you that they might know you as Savior. I pray. We pray for our country in these next six to 10 months. These are so desperate times right before us. We know that before your coming, that things will change greatly, but we ask that you would 
orchestrate, you'd be in charge. You would understand and you would keep us safe in your everlasting arms. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before you're seated, greet somebody with a handshake and a smile, will you? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is the day which the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You should have received a bulletin this morning uh, called your attention to a couple of things. Wednesday night Bible study will be at 7 o'clock this coming Wednesday night in the conference room. Uh, Pastor Keith Beecham will be the instructor. The advisory committee meeting, i got to see if I can get this right, I screwed it up last week, will be Wednesday, September 28th. Did I get that right? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then there's a note in your bulletin about how you can watch today's television uh, or service on television. Also, there's another place in that uh, uh, instructions where you can listen to the Monday radio program on the Heartland Radio Network. Uh, and that's really a great thing today. We're excited about today. I just want to tell you one thing. After the service this morning, uh, Barb Fultz and Pat Rawls have put together a time of fellowship. So before you go out to eat, if you go out that hallway and down to where the, near where the Sunday school is, we're going to have coffee and wonderful cake and great cupcakes. And it's to, to welcome John and Judy back. And so we want you to come. You can hug them lightly. We're just so glad to have him here. Ushers, please come to receive our tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for your goodness to us, for your grace and your mercy and your generosity. We ask your blessings on the gifts and the givers. In thy name, amen. Be still and know that He is God. Be still and know that He is holy. Be still, O oh restless soul of mine. Bow before the Prince of Peace. Let the noise and clatter cease. <clears throat> Be still and know that He is God. Be still and know that He is faithful. Consider all that He has done. Stand in awe and be amazed. And know that He will never change. Be still, <clears throat> be still, and know that He is God. Be still, and know that He is God. Be still. Be still and know that He is God. Be still and know He is our Father. Come rest your head upon His breast. Listen to the rhythm of 
His unfailing heart of love Beating for his little ones Calling each of us to come Be still Be Thank you, Pastor Cherry. Would you do me a favor? Would you all stand up and welcome our pastor back? Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. Thank you. Thank you, as go out to so many folks. Over these last three months, I don't know if I could name them all. Uh, this platform was originally uh, made way back when we changed the platform, but it was raised like this so that I could see the whites of your eyes. Uh, Pastor Holland and Marlon Hauk, Jim Shawning. The three boys in the balcony carried this huge thing out from back behind. And uh, I'm thankful I didn't intend it to be a throne. Uh, but the worst that's left after three months is I fatigue easily. And so anything I can do to take it easy, I'm going to do. I echo Pastor Holland's words. He said, I'm old, I'll do whatever I want. <laughs> so, Judy, I need you to come back. Um, Pastor Sherry and Phyllis, come back. We're going to sing a song before I get too far into this. And uh, I'll wait for Judy to come. I didn't know where in the program I'd sing this song. Uh, Charlotte, are you coming to play? Uh, okay. Okay, sorry. Uh, this draws us back quite a ways. You know, this week, the last 10 days, old songs have come to my mind. And I knew every word. Songs like, raise your hand if you know this. Gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Now my soul is free and in my heart. Uh, here's another one. It's different now since Jesus saved my soul. Boy, that, this is another, it's a hymn, but I don't know that you've sung it in church in 20 years. They took all our hymnals away, but... This is leading up to my message. Sing with me. We have heard the joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Bear the news to every land climb the steeps and cross the waves onward tis our Lord's command Jesus saves Jesus saves wafted on the rolling tide Jesus saves Jesus saves Tell to sinners far and wide, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Sing ye islands of the sea, echo back ye 
ocean king, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Give the winds a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Shout salvation, full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. This our song of victory. Sing that line again. This our song of victory. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. A lot of folks have asked if there's anything we can do to help you, Pastor. This morning you can help me. I used to say this when the quartet was singing. <clears throat> you can help me if you smile from time to time. And if some of you would at least move in your seat so I know you're not asleep with your eyes open. And if you'd shout a hallelujah now and then. That would, that would help. I've been wrestling uh, for a couple of weeks on what I would preach my first day back. And I can't get away from this message. And it would be the farthest thing that I would expect, but I can't get away from it, so here it goes. I want to share maybe the finest missions message I've ever shared. It comes from a seed thought in my reading from Oswald J. Smith, great pastor in the Canada uh, country. And uh, uh, kind of God began to draw it out. Uh, in Romans chapter 6, excuse me, Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it says, Whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? And how will they preach unless they are sent? Matthew 16, 15, the Great Commission, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, even the ones you don't like. I saw a sign uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it said, I have patience for only one person a day. Second line was, today is not your day. The third line was, tomorrow doesn't look any better. <laughs> Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Even those you have prejudice against. That one over big. Even if they don't live in our country. Even if they're hard to reach. Even if the country is closed and we can't get in. Matthew 24, 14 this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. If you want to speed up things on God's calendar just a bit, uh, get involved with your prayer and your resources and missions, because this has got to be done before he'll come. 
the internet plays a major part. So much of what is to happen, we wonder, how can all the world hear? Well, now in some of the smallest villages, people are walking around with a cell phone. And we have an opportunity to share the gospel with every tribe and tongue. Some years ago, I coined a phrase. Three or four of the churches that I pastored were in such deep trouble. Uh, and I began to pray about how do we walk a church out of financial impossibility or major trouble among the people. And God led me to missions. And I coined this phrase, if we would be interested in what God is interested in, he would be interested in keeping us interested. I'm going to say that again so you get it. If we would be interested in what God is interested in, he would be interested in keeping us interested. The Great Commission is not the Great Suggestion. He said, I want you to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Paul the Apostle in Romans said, if you can't go, you got to send the preacher. That's our responsibility here in the local church. From the very first offering that we took in 2010, 10% of the general fund, your tithes and offerings, or more goes directly into our missions account to add to what you give to missions, and we support missionaries in a strong way. I don't feel, as your pastor, that when a missionary is supported by our church, that the normal $25 a month helps them any. Right? Think how many churches they have to go to if they're going to get $25 or $50 a month support. We have a missionary that we support to the tune of $1,000 a month, and we've done so for years. Others at 500, many at 250. I don't think there's anybody under 200. And it is a reason that a church exists, that God helped us to buy a church. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. If you're obedient to what Christ has said, he has promised blessing. Obedience and blessing follows. I think that's good for an individual, for a family, for a business, for a church, that we would get on board. If we would be interested in what God is interested in, he'd be interested in keeping us interested. He already told us what he's interested in, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So let's get on board, even if it's something you can contribute to our missions department at 5 or 10 or $50 a month. We're going to take a missions offering before this service is over today. In order to get to where I want to go, I've got to start with a story. And this is the greatest missions story in the book. John chapter 6, verse 1, and after these things, Jesus went to the other side of the sea, and a great multitude was following him because they were seeing the signs which he was performing on those who were sick. And Jesus went up the mountain, and Jesus therefore lifting up his eyes, and seeing a great multitude that was coming to him, said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread that these may eat? And this he was saying to test them, for he himself knew what he was intending to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them for everyone to receive a little. 
One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There's a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are these among so many? He said, Have the people sit down. Jesus therefore took the loaves, and giving thanks, he distributed to those who were seated, likewise also of the fish, as much as they wanted. It's probably a good thing my grandson was not in the audience, because he can eat. His record is 15 tacos at Grandma's house in one sitting. And he walked away from the table. This needs to go up so I don't have to talk so loud. <clears throat> Verse 12, And when they were filled, he said to the disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. And so they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten. When therefore the people saw the sign which he had performed, they said, This is of a truth the prophet who is to come into the world. Preaching from the Gospels always requires that you look to the other Gospels, make sure that in the places where they list the story, you don't miss anything. You can gather some information in Matthew chapter 14. It makes it clear that Jesus broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, and they gave it to the people. So get a mental picture. Jesus is on the platform, and he's breaking bread. He's giving it to the disciples, and like the ushers collecting the offering, they're distributing to the people. Matthew 14 also tells us that there were 5,000 people, men, not including the women and children. So if you figure four people per family, I'm sure some of those uh, families had 10 kids. Uh, we know several people like that. You do too. Uh, I don't know how they survived, but 10 kids. Um, kids are for the young people. Uh, you'll get that later. Uh, if there's four per man, this crowd was not 5,000 people. It's upwards of 20,000 people. Okay, get a picture. They're on the hillside. It's grass. Uh, huge crowds. How far back, who knows how many rows there would be. Uh, in the Gospel of Mark, it lets us know that Jesus fed these people because he had compassion on them. He said they were like sheep without a shepherd. I don't have time to develop that. Mark 6 also tells us that he said to the disciples, you feed them. Again, I won't develop that, but... Matthew, excuse me, Mark 6 also tells that Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups of 50 or 100. Okay, so there's little blocks, I imagine, a place to walk around each block of 50 to 100 people. How many groups of that would be in 20,000 people? And how far up the hillside would that go? Luke tells the story, doesn't have any new information for us. Philip didn't know it, but Jesus had a test for him. As we read through the scripture, it said Jesus already knew what he was going to do, but he wanted to see if Philip would understand how miraculous his hands could be. Uh, Philip's target was, did you catch it? That everybody could have a little bit. Right? That's what the scripture said. <clears throat> he, he said if we had six to eight months wages, we still could not buy enough bread to feed 20,000 people. Not even 
to feed them so they had a little bit. Fast forward to the end of the story. I like this part. The Bible says they ate till they were full. I don't have time to contrast that either. You can do that at home. But Philip's idea was a little bit. God's idea was that they had all that they wanted. <sighs> Folks, you ask God for far less than he's willing to give you. Go like this. Remember me saying some years ago that my grandson, I only have one grandchild. Let's pause and give thanks. <clears throat> I have said that my grandson, when he was small, I guess to this day, he has no idea how much money I'd give him if he would ask me. We have no idea what God would give us if we would expand our trust and faith asking for his best for us. Oh God, I pray that you'll send $5 so I can get through today. Baloney on that. We have no idea the bountiful blessing that God will extend to us. This whole idea of missions is one of the main targets. If we would be interested in what he is interested in, he would be interested in keeping us interested. Let me say it humbly. God needs a church like this. Because we are all about what he's interested in. We have missionaries around the world. We have missionaries here at home. All of them are people we trust, know well, doing a great job sharing the Word of God. Andrew was concerned, and he found one lad with five loaves and two fish. I think I smile when I think only one mother in 20,000 planned for lunch today. Uh, you know, the kids going to school carry a lunch bag <laughs> and another bag full of food. And mom says before they get on the bus, actually on the steps getting, here's a cookie. But only one mother planned for lunch. Five loaves and two fish. Uh, They've not yet realized that Jesus is fully man and fully deity. It's pretty early yet in his ministry. And so this is a signal. This is a, a place where their minds begin to change as the disciples see what's happening. Jesus can't cook in your kitchen. There aren't enough pots or pans for 20,000. And yet he had idea, he had planned, he understood, he knew what he was going to do before uh, any of the others, and yet he proceeded in this way. If you're one of the disciples on this hillside on this day, witnessing one of the greatest miracles ever recorded, where would you want to be? <clears throat> the pews of a church are most often about empty, except for musicians, uh, of the first couple rows in every church. The back rows fill up quick. If on a Sunday morning uh, God would see fit to raise the dead, the next Sunday, I'll guarantee you, the front rows would be full. If you're one of the disciples on this day, and you're understanding as you watch what's happening, uh, that Jesus is miraculously breaking the bread and the fish 
to feed 20,000 people. Where would you want to be? I know where I want to be. I, I don't even want to be in the front pew. I want to see what's happening right here. What, where, is that, where is that stuff coming from? The bread and the fish as it continues to drop in the baskets. I want to be right up here um, Jesus said to the disciples, um, take this to the people. Uh, all the people. Uh, don't you want to be right up front trying to decide how it gets that much bread out of those baggy sleeves? Aren't you awed by what you're seeing to the point that you don't even realize it, but you're frozen in your tracks with your mouth hanging open, trying to decide if this guy is a magician or messiah. I, I wrote that on the internet many years ago. Uh, wouldn't that be hard, almost impossible, to turn your back on the scene at hand and take these baskets of bread to the first or the second row? <laughs> But the Bible says everybody was full of food. Remember the scene, 20,000 people on this hillside in groups of 50 or 100. There's a walkway around. <clears throat> and how many rows are there up that hill? The back row didn't have to send the kids down to the front and pick up whatever scraps were there so they had something to eat. The disciples, I don't know if they took a basket, distributed it to the first 50, came back and got it full again, and went to the next. I don't know if God multiplied it in their basket as they, I don't know how it went. All I know is they got all the way to the back row so that everybody had all they wanted. Anybody catching on to the missions part of this yet? <clears throat> if you're one of the disciples and you want to see what's going on, and maybe you get to oh, 03 or 04 and you hustle back hoping to get a glimpse of what's happening, <clears throat> uh, in the third or fourth row you can still see what's going on. At least when you turn to pass the bucket to the next row, you can still hear and maybe catch a glimpse of what Jesus is doing. I don't know if you've ever been in the back row of a crowd that large uh, without a sound system and without overhead video screen. <clears throat> the guys on the platform look and sound like little ants. After all, doesn't Jesus expect you as one of his disciples, I, I wrote, no, as one of his disciples, to be on the platform? When I was a child, I'd go to Lake Geneva Bible Camp in that old tabernacle building. And I'd be sitting there, and I'd look to the platform, and uh, the pulpit was here, and there'd be a song leader, often my dad. But all the way around, there'd be chairs with dignitaries sitting in them. You know, a uh, district superintendent, the assistant superintendent, uh, some of the presbyters. Uh, Pastor Holland would often be up there, one of the presbyters. <clears throat> um, you know, I'd look up at those guys, and surely they were the most important people in the world. Uh, wouldn't you expect that Jesus would have his disciples, the most important people in the world, sitting around him, trying to figure out what he's doing? And maybe he said to them, he did say to them, uh, go and do greater things, but they've got to see where this stuff is coming from. No, he said, Take this basket way back there so they're not slighted. 
How will they know, how will they hear unless the preacher is sent? Every creature, every tribe and tongue. And it's not going to be, uh, Jesus is not coming until we get this job done. Oh, pastor, we're a little church. <clears throat> we can't do a whole lot. We're going to do our part. And we're going to be obedient. We're going to take a missions offering after a while. And I want you to help me because I, I just feel that God would have us do something special for the 8, 9, 10 missionaries that we support over and above their monthly support that we would just send them a nugget. I don't know if I'm preaching this sermon on this day and taking this offering because down the line there's a missionary in a far country that we support that'll get a check from us <clears throat> and at a time where they're praying, oh God, I just, I just need a hundred dollars, American, to solve this ministry issue over and above uh, what they have. Let's go back. Um, everyone was full. We're having so much fun in America, in our churches, singing, you know, worshiping and praising and feeling God's spirit. You know, it's so wonderful. Folks, we're in the front row of what God is doing. Uh, I, forgive me, but don't you get a little weary of some of the folks on internet and on the tube that have so much shout and shine, but nothing really happens. Maybe that's just me. I don't watch Christian TV or listen to Christian radio because uh, I might preach something they just preached. Anyway, uh, we're so proud that we go to work and live our life, let our life be our witness. But it's difficult when we come to missions to really think about the Great Commission. That means me, a pastor, I'm on a fixed income, you know. <clears throat> well, God said if you're obedient, he'll bless you. I don't understand why tithes and offerings work. I only know that God said do it. <clears throat> If you've been a tither for any period of time, you know, like I know, I can't afford not to tithe because of God's blessing. Anybody else know that? Show your hand. Because of God's blessing. In addition, I can't afford not to give to missions because he said, do this. This is what's on my heart. This is what I need you to do. This is what I command you to do. And if we can't physically go ourselves, we can send someone to take the message around the world, even if it's $5 a month. Uh, and then as God blesses, you can increase that. The back rows deserve the gospel. It will set them free. It will heal their bodies. Jesus will forgive their sin and fit them for heaven. Your future grandson-in-law could be seated in row 45. One of your neighbors could have come late and they're in row 102. They're still hungry for the gospel of Jesus Christ. What if no one gets back that far with the gospel? The gospel is not about you and me. It's about reaching the lost. How long has it been since we've triumphed that subject? The gospel is not about us. Those of us who have received, I have a missionary friend that we supported for years. He's now retired. He said, I'm real tired of people hearing in the States 
hearing the gospel over and over and over and over again when I know there are people in a foreign land that have yet to hear it the first time. And he said, I'm going to do my part. It's not about us. It's about the lost. The lost people are in road 1 and 12 and 34 and 68 and 84 and 202. How many rows are up that hill? Who has the compassion of our Savior to reach them? A man who I consider to be the best pastor in the state of Florida preaches in a very small town. I visited him to preach for him, sing. And uh, I stayed one night in a motel in that city. It was so dirty, so many bugs that I had to switch to a hotel 40 miles away. I was there every day for most of a week teaching stewardship and preaching on Sunday. And I drove back and forth. 40 miles. The city is that small, that out of, it's not Orlando, it's not Fort Myers, but a rural, lazy, small town out of the spotlight. But you know what? There are lost people in that town. I think he's in row 54. You can shout, you, you can help me. A man who I consider to be the best pastor in the state of Arkansas preaches in Batesville, Arkansas. The locals pronounce it Batesville. Batesville, Arkansas. It's not Little Rock or Fort Smith. It's rural with a little corporate structure tucked neatly away by a beautiful river. A river may run through it, but a freeway does not. And he's thrilled, he's thrilled to be in row 33. But you know what? There are lost people in that city. I could tell you about the best pastor in Alabama, but I can also tell you about missionaries we support. We have missionaries that are serving here in the States to help churches grow so they can reach row 90 and 102. We have some missionaries in countries that I can't even tell you, rehearse their name before you, nor the country that they're living in because they are ministering in harm's way and it could mean their very life. One of them is hardly 28 years old. I can't remember how old she is. She's younger than that. But what struck me, and I decided we have to help her financially to go where she wants to go, <clears throat> she was so excited to go where she might be killed. And here we sit on row one or two in the States, hoping that Jesus will come. We've got a missionary in Mexico and some in Africa. Uh, Steve and Jackie Sullivan are in Thailand, hoping to get back to the country just across the border, Myanmar, that they've been witnessing for years and continue to do on the internet. Don't forget the back rows. If you can't go, Send someone to them today. Missions work is all about the back rows. I'll say it again. If we would be interested in what God is interested in, he would keep us interested. Right? It's, it works for a person. If you don't feel unusually blessed, Give a dollar a month to missions, five dollars, fifty dollars, something to missions. <clears throat> and and as God blesses and you begin to recognize, 
God pulled several churches out of the miry clay as we began to give to missions because God has a budget. That's interesting. God has a budget, and that budget is so that the gospel can go to all the world, every creature. And those of us that believe in what he has said and are obedient, he needs us to be blessed so we can continue helping that budget, if you will, preach the gospel to every creature. If we would be interested in what God is interested in, he would be interested in keeping us interested. We're going to take an offering. I'd love to give $100 to every missionary. Your pastor is going to cover two missionaries by himself today. I'm going to ask that you help me. I'd love to do so much more than that. Just as a bonus, maybe there's a missionary whose son on a foreign field got sick and got to go to the hospital. They don't have $100 to pay for the medicine. We can do that and help them. I don't know, again, why missions today. But I'm going to be faithful to what God gave me to share with you. Maybe you said in your heart, Pastor, I would love to contribute, but I didn't plan to bring that with me. Take an envelope. Uh, missions is always about pledges. You can put on there, uh, I'm going to bring $10, $50 next week to add to this blessing offering. And uh, we'll receive that also. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, we want to take the gospel to the back rows today. We want to take the gospel to the front rows. This whole idea that we have embraced of a Savior is about reaching the lost we want to do that. We want to be part. We want to be obedient. We want to receive your blessing. Uh, we don't always understand, but you have said, do this. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. And so on this day, we will join with you. And we ask that this offering would be a blessing around the world. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ushers, come quickly. Jerry. Thank you. Jesus saves. We have heard a mighty voice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Let the nations now rejoice. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Spread the tidings all around. I see Our Lord's command, Jesus saves, Jesus, last verse, walk, give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, let the nations now rejoice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Shout salvation full and free. Highest hills and deepest caves. This our song of victory. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Heavenly Father, these precious people are blessing me and Judy today. And as we would celebrate just down the hall, we ask that you would bless these folks for loving us like we love them.
bless the food to us and those that have prepared. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Barb and Pat, thank you. Stand together, you are dismissed. <laughs>